Hello and welcome to this week's video. My name is Anuska Taylor. So great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you to all my new subscribers. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you enjoy my videos, please do like, share, comment, ask me a question as well. Very happy to answer questions. Just before I start this video, I am actually releasing more short videos now. So you'll probably start to notice those sort of scattered across the week a little bit more, just to give you these little pearls of wisdom throughout the week. But I'm still creating these longer videos weekly. So lots and lots of reasons to subscribe to my channel. So today I am talking about the power of humming and what appears to be a very seemingly easy sort of simple exercise is actually incredibly powerful both from a vocal perspective in terms of the benefits for you as a speaker but also more broadly your health and i was watching a podcast last week with james nestor who wrote the book breathe and i'm not sure if any of you have read it but it's absolutely fascinating highly recommend it and he was talking in that podcast about some of the benefits, the health benefits to humming. And that's what sort of sparked this idea for this video, because I use humming as an exercise with my clients and myself every day. I mean, I literally have a humming exercise that I do every day personally, and I will walk around the house and I will hum. So I know vocally how powerful it is, but I hadn't realized from a health perspective, how powerful it was. So I'm just going to share briefly to start with some of the three kind of key benefits to humming for, for your health. And then we'll move into the voice, which is the area I feel way more comfortable talking about. But just to start with, one of the main benefits to humming from your health perspective is it actually stimulates nitric oxide in the body. Now, why does nitric oxide matter? Well, nitric oxide is important for increased circulation in the body. It's also antiviral, antibacterial and antifungal. So really, really great if you're sick, if you're recovering from an illness, humming is going to really help you. But the other benefit he talked about, which I was sort of aware of from a voice perspective, again, I link everything back to the voice, was it stimulates the vagus nerve. So when we stimulate the vagus nerve, it helps us to reduce stress, it calms the body and the mind. So it's really, really great if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling stressed, a bit of humming. Now you can see from a voice perspective already, it's basically kind of buy one, get one free. If you're about to go on stage and deliver a speech or present, doing some humming before you go on stage, you're not only going to stimulate the vagus nerve to calm you and make you feel more relaxed but you're also going to get the vocal benefits which i'm going to talk about right now and so it really is such a great exercise to do before you do any kind of public speaking so from the voice perspective then i'm going to talk about four of the main benefits to humming but i'm also going to share at the end how to hum because it seems like a very simple exercise and, and it is in a way, but as with everything, it's almost like sometimes when something is very simple, we tend to sort of almost mindlessly do it and we don't give it much intention and focus. So I just want to make sure that when you are humming, you're actually humming in the most optimal way possible, because if you're not, you're not gonna get the benefits in the same way and actually, from a voice perspective, you might just create some new problems. So we'll talk about that in a second. But first of all, the four key benefits that I see with humming. So first of all, if you're new to voice training and you're not really very familiar, have got very little awareness of your voice, humming is a great way to explore your voice. Why is this? Because you are keeping your mouth closed. It's less threatening. So. If you're doing a you can explore the edges of your voice you can go as low and as high as you can but it feels kind of quite safe and still quite contained because your mouth isn't wide open and you're not going la you know it's very very safe 
So really nice way if you're, if you're new to voice training, just start to hum and explore your voice. Now, one way you can do this is deliberately hum along to one of your favorite songs, and then you're sort of forced out of your chest voice or your lower voice if that's an area that you tend to spend a lot of time in, which to be honest, if you're a speaker and you're not a singer, that would make sense. So that's the first one, exploring your voice in a nice, safe environment. Number two is kind of along those lines, but the next stage on. So the next one is encouraging pitch variation. So one of the reasons why people often work with me is they want to access more expression, more melody. They feel their voice is very sort of monotone or flat. There's no real energy and excitement in the voice. Now, if you are used to speaking down here and you sort of talk down here all the time and you very rarely move from that place and you don't do any voice exercises, it's going to be quite a challenge to suddenly start intonating and getting more melody and expression in the voice because you're just not used to moving your voice around. So I think humming is such a great way to start to play around with the range in your voice. Again, we're keeping this in a nice, safe way because you're not really opening your mouth, which is often very threatening for people. So keep doing the humming, but this time be a little bit more intentional about it. Whereas in the first one, I was saying just explore your voice sort of randomly. Now see if you can bring a little bit more intentionality to what you're doing. So you can put your hands on your chest and just feel that kind of low vibration. So you hum somewhere that feels very kind of comfortable to you from a spoken perspective. And you should feel a little bit of a sympathetic vibration through your chest. And then you want to sort of see if you can travel up into the head. Now, obviously, it's not really in your head, but you will probably feel some sympathetic vibrations in your head. So, so you can explore this and just start to notice the difference between mm, where my voice is down here. Mm, my voice is up here and just start to notice that difference in where do I sort of feel that vibration because the more comfortable you can get with moving your voice around and leaving the safety of your chest voice the easier you're going to find it to access greater variety of pitch more energy more expression more melody in the voice it's not that you have to talk up here, but your voice is used to moving around. So humming is a great way to explore the range in your voice. And I do it myself every day. I have a humming exercise that I do every single day as part of my personal vocal routine. So I'm telling you this not only because it's great, but it's also something that I do. So number three is forward resonance. Now, I'm not going to go into massive amounts of depth here around forward resonance, but only to say as a speaker, you want your voice forward. A lot of the issues that people have with their voice are because they're pulling their voice back into their throat. So, and I'm not going to, as I say, this isn't a video about forward resonance. I have done videos on this, but just to say, doing that, mm, mm, it starts to encourage the voice forward. It gets the voice out of the throat, out of the neck, uh, down here, and it brings it forward. So if you find that you have a lot of croakiness or raspiness in your voice, your voice feels kind of tired or heavy, you find it hard to project, maybe your neck aches, maybe your throat is sore, a lot of that is down to the voice sitting in the throat. This is so common. I mean, I pretty much work with every single person on this. It, because we're just not trained to bring the voice forward. Again, coming back to what I said for number one, bringing the voice forward is more threatening because you can be heard. It's much safer to talk at the back of the throat when no one can really hear me. Versus when I bring the voice forward, well now you hear me whether, <laughs> whether I want you to or not. So a lot of this is psychological, but just to know you're aiming to bring the voice forward. So humming, Mm, mm, 
as long as and I'm going to come to this in a minute about how to hum but as long as you're sort of feeling that sound forward then this is going to really help you to start to bring more resonance into your voice and then the final one which I've kind of already alluded to within myself is it's brilliant as a quick warm-up so we've already spoken about the vagus nerve and being, you know, this stimulates the vagus nerve to calm, soothe the body. So if you combine that with a bit of a warm up before you go on stage, this is like a buy one, get one free. You're calming and soothing your body, but at the same time, you're warming your voice up and you're also getting the voice forward. So you're really then primed and ready for any kind of speaking engagement. So again what you want to do here is just start in a comfortable place in your voice so a comfortable sort of speaking place in your voice mm, mm. and then just go up and down mm, as smoothly as possible one of the things i see a lot with clients when they're learning this is it can be a bit jerky mm, mm, mm. see if you can keep it very smooth mm. Mm. so it really feels very effortless there's no pushing grasping squeezing into this which brings me on to finally how to hum which sounds a bit weird but you'd be surprised how many people will do a lot of constriction and squeezing into a hum without even realizing. So let me just demonstrate what that might sound like and then I'll demonstrate what the opposite sounds like. So if you're humming but you're pulling the sound back and squeezing into it, it might be like a So it feels to me like it's just sort of stuck in my throat and there's a little bit of vibration at the front of my mouth but it's predominantly very throaty and very sort of necky. It also sounds a bit squeaky, a bit croaky. I don't really have a lot of freedom there. If I can bring it forward, you want to make sure primarily the mouth and the nose are tingling a little bit. You can feel a little bit of vibration around the mouth and the nose. So probably the easiest way to do this if you're new is to put your hands over your mouth. Mm -hmm. If you can't feel the vibration here, just keep focusing on the M. Mm, mm, mm. And make sure you're feeling it forward. If you're not feeling it forward, you're not going to get the benefit. Because if you're not feeling it forward, it's being pulled back into your throat. So all the things I've talked about, you're not going to get the benefit. And if anything, you're just reinforcing the habit of pulling the voice back into your throat. So mm, mm, from that place, you're encouraging the voice forward. It's going to be far easier to move up and down in your range from that place. Mm, mm, than if the mm, voice is back here. Just as another little point, which may or may not help you, I find this does help a lot of people that I do this exercise with, is just to loosen your neck a little bit while you're doing it. So just gently turn your head from side to side. What this does is it stops you gripping into your neck and your throat because now you have to bring the sound more forward. Whereas if the neck is still, it's easier to kind of go and squeeze into it. So try that, try practicing finding, first of all, this forwardness with the hum. Make sure you're feeling the lips buzzing, the vibrations around the nose, put your hands over your nose and your mouth if you're not sure. Find that kind of comfortable place in your voice first, explore your voice, and then see if you can start to extend your range. Go low, high, go as low and as high as you can. As long as you're not pulling the sound back and you're not squeezing into your neck, it's fine, just go for it. Even if your voice cracks, that's okay. Play around with that and then you can try this on your favorite song, but just see if you can keep that feeling forward. The hardest thing I think for people when I do this is as the pitch goes up, 
they tend to track the pitch with their nose and their head. So regardless of what the pitch is doing, the voice is always forward. I can never say this enough. So even if your pitch is right up here, doesn't matter, the voice is still forward. If I'm tracking the pitch and I'm going up, it's gonna sound more like this. And I can feel like, I, I feel like I'm being strangled when I do that. If you do that, you're gonna feel like you hit a wall from a vocal perspective. So the voice being forward allows far more freedom in your voice than if you're sort of tracking the pitch with your nose and your head. So a lot here and let me know how you go because it really is on the surface a very, very simple exercise, but can be done wrong and actually create more problems than you solve. So let me know how you go. Any questions or comments, post them below. If you would like some personal help with your voice, if you're ready to step into a greater expression of your voice, then you can also book a 30 minute voice discovery call. I'd love to help you with your voice. If you just want some help with this specifically, you can just book a one hour session with me, links are below, and we can just go through all this in your own voice, private one-on-one, -on -one, recorded for you to refer back to. So I'm here to help you ask me questions, reach out for help, and I will see you next week or next week's video. Thank you so much for watching.